Check it out. We've got a floor system separated by this firewall. Another floor system almost done. They're finishing the hangers. So I think we can get going on the subfloor on this side. We're gonna use the Advantech X-Factor again. We've used it before. Let's get going. These trusses do require a rat run of a two by six on edge through here. We're gonna wait and put the subfloor on first because that will even out the trusses if we got some that are crowned up a little. It'll bring them closer, then we'll do the rat run. I think we got plenty of hose. We got plenty. We've got something new here, Tetra Grip by Passload. Shoots these spiraled nails. I think it's got some kind of adhesive on it even. To help eliminate floor squeaks. So we're gonna use that today. Yeah. <laughs> 48. Should have chalked the line before I put the glue, but I think I held it. God, I got raised chalk line. <laughs> I think I held it back enough. Just one second. I'm good. I'm gonna snap it. All right, let me get both sides. I'm gonna scoot over this way. Yep. 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 Perfect. Nice. What's up, guys? How's it going? How's it going, man? Jamie's got our Advantech subfloor adhesive liberally <laughs> applied hey, right there. That's what I want it to look like. Okay, that'll stick it. That's what I want. Hit me. Got your coil right there. Uh, that's a coil? <laughs> it kind of in the air. Well, I'll tell you what, here. I'll recoil it for you. At least unlike a roofing coil, it's not all mangled up with the metal connecting That's part. That's true. You know, so um, it's, it's actually really floppy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Bespoke Post and they're a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome right to your front door with top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. 90% of the products come from small brands many of which are based right here in the US. And every month they introduce their members to cool new products and outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more, even live oysters, based on a preference quiz they fill out. Every box of awesome has around $70 in value inside, but you only pay a fraction of that value. Plus you can preview each box before you get it. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you, and then you can check it out and decide whether you wanna keep it, whether you wanna swap it, or whether you wanna skip the month entirely. You only pay for what you want. My last two boxes I loved, they were the filet and the chill. The filet box came with the almost four inch knife, which is almost four inches, and the eight inch knife. And these are some really great kitchen knives. I've really enjoyed them. They're really sharp, and they're made from cryogenically tempered Japanese steel with a full tang construction, grippy composite handles. They're really nice and really, really, really sharp. My chill box came with this Ren 23 liter cooler, and it's a really tough cooler, tear resistant up to 375 pounds, built-in sheath for a bottle opener. And I'm gonna load this thing up with drinks and go to the lake and enjoy myself. It'll hold a full case of beer cans or eight bottles of wine or like a ton of drinks like I just put in this thing today. And I can throw it over my shoulder and get through the woods down to the water without carrying a cooler out in front of me like this. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, just head to the link in our video description and use code PERKINS20 or just head to bespokepost.com slash PERKINS20. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring our video and let's get back to work. Whoa. That's it. All right. Um, that's it right there. Knock it. Oops, hang on. Okay. Yep. All right. Left. Uh, so that's it. It's, I think, done. Okay. Yep, she's done. Is 
Jamie's gonna hold it flat. Jono's gonna bop with the sledge. He's got his toes up on this two by four so it doesn't just bounce, tiny, 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 bounce and go away. And that's it, we'll shoot it. You know, you can hit them too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it can bounce. It, it'll just bounce right back. So you gotta give it like... I, nope, cut. No, no, really, cut. no. You know, what, you know what a dead blow hammer is? Yeah. We need a dead blow sledge. We've got a couple of sheets shot down with the Tetra grip. And I'll tell you one thing, I did drag this brand new hose through the glue and it's all over me. Um, initial thoughts is it takes a lot of air. It's got this giant, fitting on it and we have turned the air pressure way up and it's into yellow pine um, so it's it's really impossible to get these out once they're in there that's what i'll tell you uh, yeah, i feel good about the grip factor on it there you go cut that off of there and we have it in bump mode so this is way faster than screwing here's something we've been doing on the last few builds is leaving a little extra floor sheathing sticking off this will be the top of the stairs coming this way and the reason is we may add layers to this truss, which we definitely will, like maybe a sub riser or even a finished riser on top of that. So we don't wanna to have to patch in a little teeny piece of subfloor that doesn't have any strength from like tipping. So this will have nice strength if we don't pack out as far as this sticks out, we'll just zip it off and we'll have a nice strong lip right at the top of the stairs. It was probably your idea. It was Arlo's. Oh, it was, it was Arlo's, Arlo's idea. idea. He's the man. Arlo! We got a guest drone pilot here. This guy's a real drone pilot and he's working right there. <laughs> so, uh, Tyler, don't fire this guy. I'm, I'm paying him or something. He's <laughs> off the clock. He's on our clock. He's gonna get some shots. If you're thinking about trying this Advantech subfloor adhesive, we'll read you the can. We like it. Uh, squeak free guaranteed, eight times more coverage. Polyurethane bonding strength, which will adhere to wet or frozen wood, which is a big difference. And quick application, your hand's not gonna go numb. Squeezing a big tube, this just, you squeeze the trigger, comes out nice and easy. And my hand's stuck to the can. Well, that was fun, guys. Uh, you wanna do it again? I think we're going to say that on every stage of the process. Yeah. Well, that was great. Let's do it again. Yeah. Stupid duplex. Oh, man. <laughs> What's great is if we totally screw one side up, we can just like redeem ourselves and only film the, yeah, second, the second side. And everybody's be like, wow, those guys are amazing. Exactly. Yes. We'll perfect it the second time. Yeah, we did chalk right through some subfloor adhesive. She's going now. Dude, that was good though. nailing our floor trusses on these diamonds that are printed that's because these are on 19.2 inch centers which seems totally random but if you add those up you actually divide an eight foot sheet by 19.2 you get one two three four five spaces as opposed to 16 inch centers six spaces so it's just another way to divide eight feet evenly and all of our sheet goods here are four by eight so that's what everything's based on and you get this crazy 19.2 number i think it's empty getting all i can don't go underneath jamie i know he's doing popcorn <laughs> popcorn glue while these boys play with the foam so right through here there's going to be a handrail that's connecting to the floor so we're going to do some blocking probably like flat two by fours all the way between these so that we hit something solid if we need to screw anything down later which we probably will and that way there'll be something there which would be awesome
I just dropped Jono's drill off of here and <laughs> bent the bit like, <laughs> and then he took it and smacked it with a hammer and now it's straight again. <laughs> that was impressive. It's all good. Yeah, he was like, don't drop my drill, and then immediately <laughs> dropped it. Hey, if you're not familiar with this Advantech X-Factor that we're using here, it's Advantech with this overlay that's yellow that helps to shed bulk water. It also makes it high-vis when you snap chalk lines, or there you go, if you write something on it in Sharpie, even for a long time after it's applied, if it's been sitting out in the rain, it still looks great and you can still see your marks. So it's just a more premium version of their already premium product that we've been using for decades, the regular Advantech. It also is a little more grippy. It's got nice textures, so yeah. not, not slippery at all. They don't advertise that, but I told them that it's more grippy, especially when it's wet than the regular Advantech. We really like it, and we want to say a huge thanks to Huber Advantech for hooking us up with this material for this job. They're great folks down there, and we appreciate it. It's Monday morning, we're back on site, and today's a big day because we're gonna go up with stairs, evidently. Arlo's working on that. There's a few details related to this floor truss system the guys are working on, putting in the thing called the strong back. Yep. It's like a rat run, but it's on edge to give stiffness from uh, truss to truss, I think, mm -hmm. is the purpose. Uh, it's really nice actually having that space because I don't know of any other floor system type that you can do that and interconnect them perpendicularly in the center of the span. Perpendangular? <laughs> Perpendangular. Um, so I really like that. As a matter of fact, you could go nuts and put like a lamb beam in there or a double, yeah. triple layered. Yeah, you can really stiffen the floor system. Your joints and stuff. So yeah, I think it's awesome. We're actually using the squared out section for duct work because mm -hmm. we're not going to have a rigid square duct taking up that space. So that's a great space for us to actually put in the brace. You know, they specify it to go on the outside of that square thing. <laughs> and they've got these oversized like nail plates, you know, the stamp plates on the trusses. Yeah. Well, anyway, they I have it, they have it drawn on the drawing right there yeah. and you they show to... it overlapping. They show them intersecting. The truss. There's no way. The plates. There's no way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That wouldn't work. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. jono has got me a super sharp pencil right here. Got your strong back up there for you, bub. Can you guess what's next? Well, I mean, I'm not the smartest guy, but I'm thinking that we probably <laughs> have to do this again on the other side. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I this know. This is sort of a trend on this job. You do it once here and then. It's like Groundhog Day. It's like you do it over here, then you're like, oh man, I gotta do it again on the other side. <laughs> it sucks. You struggle with it on this side, and then you think you're done, and then you gotta go do the same thing on the other but side. But it shouldn't so, be as know. much of a struggle over there, right? Have you worked with me and Jason before? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I got the gun. <laughs> the gun? I forgot my gun. That's not even my song. Arlo has got our pattern stringer made up here and we're gonna test fit it before we cut the other five of these to make sure they're right. It'd be a huge mistake, I think, to just like assume it's right, right? Something that's helpful to know if you're gonna build stairs is that our pattern right now all the placement of these cuts represent the surface of the finished materials, all right? We're gonna take off three quarters for a sub riser and three quarters for a finish riser. We're gonna take off three quarters for a sub tread and another inch for a finish tread. But this represents the finished product right now in total. We're gonna set it in there. And if all that lines up perfectly, I can check the measurements and be assured that that works. Then we're gonna come and remodel this thing into the size it should be to accommodate those other materials. Now I know what you're thinking, that seems crazy, right? But actually we're not gonna be cutting off of each tread and each riser like here where you see the sawtooth shape. We're actually just cutting the total amount off the bottom that drops the whole unit down and then 
On the other end, we're gonna be cutting off of the side that hangs on the side of the floor system, moving the whole system in to allow for those two additional layers. So it's really not that hard, it just sounds like it. Yeah, that sounded crazy. I know, I actually tried to make it sound really terrible. While we were visiting with Kyle from RR Buildings, he recommended this Metabo triple hammer impact driver. So I bought one. Jason just tested it. What'd you think? Uh, it's great. It's super light and it's actually- No, no, what did you really say? I said it's cute. It's great for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is though. It's nice and quiet. Okay. And uh, easy to maneuver. I mean, like I said, perfect for yeah. a guy like, guy like you. So I think the real benefit with the triple hammer is it's supposed to put it in faster because that has two, uh, three hammers instead of two. So it's bat instead of bat. Oh yeah. Yeah, my D-wall, this goes in way faster. <laughs> Okay. This is, this is a man's drill. Yeah, that's a drill drill. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it's pretty nice. You can't cut this thing off. Yeah, that's this. annoying. That's so it doesn't Yeah, oh, that's pretty nice though. Oh, that isn't bad. It's like jewelry. It's like your ski pole. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you would like. <laughs> So our measurements added up there at the top, seven and five eighths look perfect. But what yeah. the key to this thing is making sure that the treads are level while you're at that seven and five eighths. Okay. So Jamie's checking this with yeah. a torpedo. It's actually looking like we need to come up down there, which is actually the quarter that we need to gain. That is so small. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's get a bigger level. Jamie wants I a bigger think, level. I think, it's, I think it's gonna take whichever one of these you go on because I think it's all, that one's the other way. Oh yeah. I, right. I, I think this is... This is one of the few times Arlo is like, yeah, it's fine. I think it's... I <laughs> Usually think... he's like measuring my, with a micrometer. Jamie's also checking just our space we have between the wall and the start of the stairs. Needs to be as much as possible. It's yeah. about three foot six and that's what it is on the plans, but just checking. This stringer is cut. Now I'm going to cut the bottom, which I didn't do yet. And I'm referencing what we did on our pattern here. This was our line. But our flooring is going to be about a quarter inch thick. It's going to be like a click together floating. So I drew this little bird's mouth about a quarter inch below. That's going to make this a quarter inch taller to accommodate that flooring. That will also raise the top step, all the steps by one quarter. But that's okay because we're going to add that same thickness of flooring on top of the upstairs subfloor. So it's all going to work out, hopefully. <laughs> Because of the way the grain runs through this little sliver at the bottom right here, Arlo and I added a piece of blocking that basically will strengthen that so this won't just snap off while we're trying to install it. Now we're gonna add another two by six here to space this whole thing off the wall to re leave room for drywall and the skirt board to slide in behind this so you don't have to cut that stuff around the stair treads. checking out Jamie's progress here in the stairwell. And I saw him doing a couple things that I think are pro tips. One thing is that when you cut a bunch of chunks out of one side of a board like that, even if it's a straight board, it will make the board bow, usually in the opposite direction. So these bow down. So to account for that, Jamie sided up this and had someone screw it while they're pushing up in the middle to make sure it was straight again. Then they lagged it in with these six inch GRK RSS screws into all the studs so that each side is really really locked in and won't ever squeak or move. So I think those are some great tips if you want to get a really nice set of steps. Are you almost done? Yeah, this is going pretty fast actually. Okay, I got a pee, so I'm just debating on whether I should get a ladder or wait on you. Uh, you better get a ladder. <laughs> you don't risk it, get a I can ladder. just go right here. No, please, no. <laughs> Did you guys do it right? Well, I had to just check real quick and it looks like looks like we did it right this time. We might have lucked out, I think. <laughs> it doesn't look right. That's what I, I already knew it was right because I already checked all this a bunch. But then looking at it, that top step just looks so big, I thought, ah, that can't be right. But you're gonna add an inch tread. Add an inch tread, add a quarter inch flooring. It's gonna bring it up three quarters. Hmm, math don't lie. Beautiful thing. Math don't lie. 
man. <laughs> You're really good at that. I know. I've been working my whole life on that one. <laughs> What's the reason for this half inch you're adding? Well, our drywall is five eighths thick and typically we want to leave a space for the skirt board and the drywall and it's always tight with an inch and a half. So with a five eighths drywall, we're losing an extra eighth in that space and there's no way our skirt board is going to slide down in there. So we're going to actually have a little bit of extra room on oh, this. That'd be nice. About an extra eighth. Now it really doesn't matter that we have extra space because the, uh, you know, the tread and the riser just hang off a little bit. It's all good. It don't matter. It really doesn't. Get my lunch in the morning. It loves some Lexel. Oh! <laughs>